Hello and welcome to another CS0 Intro to Java Programming video. In this video I'm going to talk about Booleans. Um, I'm going to talk about using them as flags for switching through if-else statements. Before I do that, I really want to talk about the Boolean type in general. So Boolean, it is a primitive type. Spell it correctly. There we go. I'm going to make a boolean called is red and another is called is green. So the boolean type is a primitive type that is one bit in size. In other words, it has the ability to hold one of two different states. It can either hold true or it can either or, or it can hold false. So I could put a boolean literal in there. Is green gets true is red gets false. All right, so th these are booleans. I can also put a statement in there that resolves to some sort of boolean value. Is green gets, uh, let's see, three less than eight plus 90 over 2. So I could do some calculations and use one of those con uh, conditional operators and see, you know, resolve to some sort of a Boolean statement. I could also throw in some of the logical operators and um, let's see, what else would I throw in there? Um, 4 equals 9. Okay, so this statement here, when we execute through the whole thing, it's going to resolve to false. Okay, um, 8 plus 90 divided by 2, less than 2, that's, that's not true. That's going to be, what, uh, 47 or something like that. And then 4 is not equal to 9. And you've got that and, it's going to say that that whole thing is false. We're going to talk more in depth about these things in a future unit. But for now, just know that some sort of statement either has to resolve to a Boolean or a Boolean literal has to get assigned into one of these variables. So what are these variables used for? These variables are used all over the place. For example, if statements. If is green, print out, print line is green. Now if this resolves to true, it's going to allow us into this statement. We saw this sort of thing in the previous video. We didn't actually use Boolean variables in that conditional statement of the if, but we did use Boolean values. So if I run this, it's going to print out is green. Well, it's not actually, it's not going to because I, I, I changed is green here. So I'll run this. is green was initially true, I reset it to false, it's not going to let us in there. If I comment this out and run is green, it's going to say is green because is green is true. True allows us in here and it's going to get to that. So these are Boolean variables. They can either hold true or false, or they can hold more complex statements that will resolve to a truth condition, true or false. Clear? Great. Let's see how these Booleans can be used. Oftentimes we're going to set up Boolean flags to establish the truth condition state of a program. Now, we are going to have complex programs that are going to have lots of control statements, things like if and else's, switches, and uh, loops that are going to change the direction of the execution of the program based on what some values in the program are. What I'm doing is I'm setting up a uh, set of Boolean flags that will tell us how we're going to draw our program. I'm going to run this Boolean flags here. And you'll see that I've got a J-frame with a series of buttons, red, green, blue. When I hit green, it's going to be green. When I hit blue, it's going to be blue. When I hit red, it's going to be red. 
change it to between a square and a circle. Okay, So that's what this does. You can see that there's a lot of decision making that has to be made here. It has to determine what color it's going to be. It has to determine what type of shape it's going to be before it can draw. That's what those Boolean flags are going to be used for. This program is identical to the one in the previous video. If you did not watch the videos on inner classes or if else basics, you need to stop this right now and go back and watch those too because I'm not going to go into detail on all the stuff about creating an inner class and using constants and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to spend more time just talking about Booleans on this video. So if you're looking for some review, go to those previous videos and review them. Make sure you know that material really well before you come back into this. All right. Public class Boolean flags, extends JFrame, implements action listener. I've got my instance variables up here, um, a couple constants, display width, display height, and display height is set to display width, just like in the last video. Circle size is set to display width divided by two, just like in the last video. I've got a J panel, which is a GUI panel. I've got my display panel, which is from my nested inner class. I'm calling it display. And I've got my buttons, red, green, blue, square, and circle. And then here are my Boolean flags. These booleans are going to be used in if-else statements to set the state of all of these, uh, uh, set the state of the color and set the state of the drawing. Okay, I've initialized this to have red be true and to have circle be true. The other ones I did not initialize. Now here's the deal with pr with primitive types, they all have an initial value, and by default. Booleans will hold false, just like by default an int will hold zero or a double will hold 0.0. .0. Booleans have a default value as well, false. So I can just leave all these ones uninitialized, but then set the is circle and is red to true. Then I've got my color down here to see. All right, main method, I'm doing all my main method stuff instantiating my frame, default close operation, setting my layout to border, and setting up my GUI, packing it, and setting vis visible. All these things I've dis dis um, described in multiple videos numerous, numerous times. So let's go to the setup GUI really quickly and see what's happening. I'm getting my content pane like always. I'm instantiating my display panel, which as you've seen now in, in two videos, it is from my display panel class, which extends JPanel. It's got its own paint component and a constructor that's going to set up the preferred size and the background color. And then in my paint component, I've got my painting taking place. Okay, so go back to setup GUI, creating my JPanel for the GUI flow layout, and I'm creating all my buttons, adding action listeners to them. None of this stuff is new. You have the lecture files, so you can look all over those and, and pause this. I'm adding all of my buttons to the GUI panel. I'm adding the GUI panel to the window in Border Layout South and adding my display to the window in Border Layout Center. That's my GUI. Maybe take a second to look at all this on your lecture file and um, just know how all that is put together. None of this stuff is new. It's all review. Let's look at action performed because that's where all the action takes place. In action performed, I'm doing the same thing that I did in a previous video of using if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, and display.repaint to set up my Boolean state in this case and then force a repaint. So what happens is when I press a button, those buttons are all registered to the listener and they're going to fire off an action event and that'll get consumed by action performed and used in this parameter argument. Then we're going to check the source. Once again, we're going to check for the identity of that source and see if it's the same as the uh, identity of the red button or green button or blue button or whatever button it is. So this is going to tell us which button fired the event. If the button that fired the event was red, I'm going to set is red to true. I'm going to set is blue and is green to false. Else if it's green, I'm going to set is green to true, is blue and is red will be false. Else if it's blue, I'm going to set is blue to true, is red, is green to false. If it's circle, I'm going to set circle to true and square to false. If it's square, I'm going to set square to true and circle to false. And it's going to get through that whole if else chain and and then it's going to get down to repaint. 
So what's going to happen here is when you press a button, it's going to either look at the colors or the shapes, and it's going to set the Boolean state for those, and then it's going to force a repaint. Okay? So it's going to set up those Boolean values to make some decisions later on in Paint Component. So let's look at that Paint Component that gets fired when we hit Repaint. Paint Component. Call on Super as always. And now, if is red, color or C becomes color red. Now, why did I just pass the Boolean variable in there? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I actually do a check? What if red is red equals true? Well, I don't need to do that. This is actually a redundant statement because what um, that if uh, conditional is looking for is it's looking for a Boolean value. It's looking for a true or false. And as we know, is red can only hold either true or false. Now, if I go is red equals true, if is red is true and true is true, they're the same thing, so this whole thing resolves to true. Then we would get in here. If is red is false, false is not equal to true, so we wouldn't get in here. Well, what's happening is there are two checks that are taking place. We're going to do this check here for the equivalence statement, and then we'll do the check here for the whole conditional statement. It's redundant. All Java needs is a Boolean. So if you're using Boolean variables, you could just pass them directly into this conditional statement of an if or an else if, and it'll look at what value is held in that Boolean variable, and then um, change the flow of the program accordingly. So if this holds red in it, we'll do this, and then we'll skip all the else's. If this holds um, false in it, then we'll move on to here. And if this holds true, we're going to do this. Otherwise, we're going to move on. Okay. So what's happening here is, in is red, it's going to check the state and see if it's true. And it's going to set the, the color C to red. If it's blue, it'll set the color C to blue. If it's green, it'll set the color C to green. And then we're going to do g.setColor under here. Okay, so we'll take whatever color was in C and set it to the graphics context that color. Then we're either going to draw a circle or an oval, or we're going to draw a rectangle. If is circle is true, we'll choose to fill the oval. Else if is square is true, we'll choose to fill the rectangle. All right. Now these fill oval and fill rectangle are exactly like the previous two videos, so I'm not going to explain them in depth. If you want to um, look over that code, uh, look over it, make sure you know how it works. But what I really wanted to get at here is how we're using these Boolean flags up here in Action Performed to set up our Boolean state. Then we're going to use that Boolean state down here in Paint Component and actually draw what we're supposed to be drawing. All right, so those are blue Boolean flags, and that's how Boolean flags can be used to set up the state of a program. Thanks for watching.